Hey, 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 what do you guys know? It is another Tuesday night, uh, another uh, another live stream. Really excited for, for tonight. Uh, really happy to have tonight's guest on, and we'll bring him on here in a, in a few minutes. But really excited to, to have him on tonight, just to kind of allow him to share with, with you all um, really what it is that's going on and how many other great things are happening you know, outside of Kentucky and Indiana and all of these things. I mean, not to say bad things about any of them because they're doing great things, but the idea with this was going to be to, you know, allow you to understand some of the, the real like nuances of what goes on kind of behind the scenes a little bit with, with somebody that, that I had only met about a month or so ago and, and in person anyway. And, the the passion and all that you could you could feel it um you could you could taste it in the whiskey and and shortly thereafter i um i got in got in touch with wit and and asked if we could we could do this and get it all set up and we'll talk about some of his whiskeys and the processes and and all of that stuff tonight but uh the idea was to hopefully if you weren't aware or familiar with what he's doing there this was the idea to, to kind of get you guys a little bit more exposed. And, and we, as the club have a couple of things coming. So I wanted to tie all of this stuff really in, but uh, before we bring them on, let me, uh, let me say hi to a few people that were in here first. Niff was in first, Mr. William Wiley. I'm sure Whit knew he was going to be in here uh, lurking. That's for sure. Um, Mr. Nick Anderson, Lance. Good to see you, buddy. Sugar Kitty, GT Mustang. Good to see you. Uh, MJ, Polly P, Mr. Girth Brooks, good to see you. Mr. Widener, good to see you as well. Southern Bell Bourbon, yeah, good to see you. Thanks for uh, popping in. I know you're down in that neck of the woods. Top Dog, good to see you. Benny, Ben Dramon, good to see you. Roy, Mr. Roy R. Does Cocktails. What else we got here? Um, yeah, so anyway, the idea tonight was exactly to to make you a little bit more, more familiar. And, and as you guys can see, we'll do a, a nice little giveaway and, and maybe for someone who's not been exposed to anything from ASW or to try something different tonight will be your opportunity. And we're going to leave it up to, to wit, to decide what he, uh, what he wants uh, you as the, uh, the winner to get tonight. So that will be awesome uh, to do. So without further ado, let me, uh, let me bring on the, uh, the man of the hour. And we'll, uh, we'll get tonight's, uh, action going here. Mr. Wood Hagman, how are you, sir? Doing good, Scott. How about yourself? Not bad, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Like I said before, it was, uh, it was a pleasure to finally get to get a chance to meet you after maybe a few correspondences, you know, here and there, but it was awesome to finally get there, meet you and spend a, a good afternoon tasting what it is that, uh, that you're making there at, at ASW. So, um, it, it was, it blew my mind. I knew at that moment I was already kind of spinning the wheels about, man, I got to get them on and just let them talk and let them kind of share your passion. Cause you could feel it, man. It, you were exuding that, that ASW whiskey passion. And, and I love, I love when, when I can kind of feel that and see that from, from other people. So that was, uh, it was an honor to, to, to be down there and spend an afternoon with you. That's awesome, man. Yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm so stoked to be here. Like, it is such an honor to be on the show and uh, be able to talk just about whiskey and about ASW with you, my friend. So it was uh, a lot of fun having you and Jason and the guys down here in Atlanta and getting to do uh, all this cool whiskey stuff and, and taste whiskey. Man, I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, it's honestly, this is like the dream, getting to just come here make whiskey uh talk about whiskey with people and it be like my day jobs super awesome man I, I i love it i wouldn't change it for a minute just honestly thankful to be here and yeah. be a part of this stream of what you guys are doing this is awesome yeah. well we we appreciated you um you know having us down there it was a it was a heck of an afternoon that that's for sure so let's 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 kind of back it up a little bit i i know before you kind of got into the whiskey world where where did it kind of all start where did the the passion for for what you're kind of doing now where where and how did that all all kind of start for you yeah i mean that's a great question scott honestly uh 
we'll take it back way before whiskey, uh, back before I was even uh, legal drinking age. I've been in the beverage in industry for almost 15 years now. I got my start in the coffee industry as just a guy right out of high school looking to uh, get his first job. Uh, did little things and little side jobs, but kind of found a passion uh, in making coffee. Went on to do that for almost 10 years, was uh, just making coffee, did everything you could possibly think of in coffee, whether it was education, managing coffee shops, uh, competing in barista competitions, doing like every nerdy aspect of it. But through just that general uh, like bit of experience and using my palate on a daily basis, I was able to, you know, start tasting other things. People would uh, say, oh, you like this type of coffee. Have you ever tried this type of wine? Or are you into craft beer? Or are you into whiskey? So that was a very easy way for me to start dipping my toes into different types of uh, beverages that weren't just coffee, because coffee was what I knew, what I was focused on. I was really obsessed with it, honestly. Uh, but once I started tasting these other things, I got really into wine for a while, fell down that rabbit hole. And then when I started tasting whiskey and learning about whiskey, I was like, man, this goes super deep. Uh, it was really cool to just be able to start talking to people about that and uh, start tasting little bits of whiskey, not really knowing much. Uh, but it was uh, before I had almost any whiskey knowledge at all that I met Jim and Kelly, who were the uh, owners over here at ASW. So uh, Jim and Charlie Thompson founded it. Jim and Kelly, Kelly is Jim's wife. They would come to the coffee shop that's right down the street all the time. So I was a manager there. I was uh, doing education there at East Pole Coffee. Um, and honestly, East Pole Coffee has got me, uh, you know, really to where I am today as far as like tasting things and getting my palate in order. Like they were the ones that really helped me uh, perfect to like my tasting for coffee, but meeting Jim and Kelly and getting to come hang out at the distillery was kind of an intro for me, uh, into whiskey ba base, like past the basics, just, uh, you know, tasting whiskey with friends or drinking whiskey with friends, which I had already been doing a little bit, but I didn't really know much about it until I started hanging out at ASW distillery. And that's when I fell in love with whiskey and somehow was able to work my way into here. And then now I'm making whiskey here. It's awesome. Yeah, it, it was it, it was interesting when when we were there and kind of listening to you kind of talk a little bit about it, you know, but I think a lot of your background with with coffee and the tasting and just the, the process of of what coffee beans have to go through, you know, your your all those senses, your nose, taste, all of those probably have led to you being how you are now and, and all of those those details that you looked for in coffee, you're probably now looking for those subtle differences, you know, in the whiskeys that you're producing. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. So, I mean, when we talk about coffee, there's a lot of things to consider as far as, you know, a lot of people think about coffee and think about, um, you know, Oh, coffee is a pretty, you know, straightforward beverage, but coffee goes like super deep. There's a, uh, back to the way it's farmed, uh, how it's grown, where it's grown, elevation, varietals of coffee, how it's processed, how the seed is removed from the fruit, which then is dried and then is uh, exported, imported, brought through roasting and the roasting process and how that plays into it and even brewing it. So preparing the cup of coffee once it's gone through all this, uh, all of these steps, I want to say, what's up to Southern Bell Bourbon, Lauren? Hey, good to yeah. see you. Uh, she texted me. She asked if I was nervous. I'm a little nervous to be, to be honest, but yeah, thanks. there's nothing, there's nothing to be nervous about, man. Just you're, you're doing a fantastic job and it's, uh, you know, but anyway, yeah, I, I, I knew when you were kind of talking about the, the coffee side of things that how you could, you really utilize both of, of, or I shouldn't say both, but those skills that you were using, because they do kind of translate over to what it is you're doing now, you know, excluding maybe the, the production side of things and mash bills and, and all of that. Yeah. What's up, Michael? Want to say what's up? Everyone's texting me. What's up? All my friends. Michael, I'm sure you're probably, get, so you're probably going to get uh, you're probably going to get a million, a million text messages, but uh, yeah, let me yeah. ask you what, so th this will be, we'll, we'll give you a little, a little icebreaker right here. We'll let you not sure. have to think too much, but you're, you're going on, you're going on vacation for a month, let's say. Okay. 
You can take you can take one bottle of ASW, whatever that may be. What are what are three other? This is where it's interesting to get your perspective on because I'm sure you drink other things besides ASW. But the interesting part is outside of ASW, what are you taking on a month long vacation if you can't buy whiskey wherever it is you're going? Doesn't have to be whiskey; it can be anything else. Doesn't matter. Sure. Uh, well, well, let's go ahead and start with the whiskey. First, first of all, I'd like to just, uh, you know, say and give a shout out to the people that helped me get into whiskey. So there's really three main people that helped me get into whiskey. And I think this would actually uh, help help you understand the three bottles that I would bring other than ASW. So uh, the number one person that helped me get into whiskey was actually uh, Brett, uh, who passed away, he, the Scotch Trooper. Um, he brought me into the tasting room at the ASW exchange. So he used to work for us at ASW was the tasting room manager. And I was just volunteering on the bottling line. So at this point I was here at ASW working on the bottling line, uh, kind of getting my feet wet, tasting our whiskeys. But as far as like other whiskeys outside of our whiskeys, I was still pretty new to it. I had been tasting a few things here and there, but I hadn't been tasting, uh, a lot. Brett was getting me into scotch. So he was like, hey, man, taste this scotch and this scotch and this scotch. And that was the first, like, when I say, like, the first bottle of whiskey I bought, like, the first non-cheap bottle of whiskey I bought, I was like, I'm going to go out and buy a bottle of whiskey. And it was still, I mean, it was only, like, 50 bucks at the time, maybe $45. But I remember buying a bottle of Laphroaig 10, which I know everyone in the chat, all you bourbon people are going, oh, Laphroaig, no. But that was it. That was, like, my in like intro into whiskey and saying whoa this tastes interesting this tastes different this tastes unique i'm like not sure what it is i'm not sure if i love it i yeah. don't hate it i find it interesting like this is really unique because i was used to uh i guess basic whiskeys a lot of people would say tasting whiskeys that were just simple 80 proofers uh cheap whiskeys and then tasting the asw stuff which i was super impressed with i was like whoa this is like whiskey is really different like than the whiskey that i thought i knew i was like craft whiskey is really different and then mm -hmm. tasting lafroy 10 i was like whoa this is really unique this is really different uh and then i kind of fell in love with scotch so i was actually collecting and buying bottles of scotch before mm -hmm. i had dipped my toes into uh american whiskey much past what we were doing at asw it was like i have all these asw bottles this is my american whiskey and then i have all these uh european mostly scotch but some irish all these european whiskeys uh and then that was like my non uh american whiskey but then my buddy kevin who big shout out to kevin i don't know if he's watching but kevin that dude got me into bourbon that dude got me into american whiskey he was like yo dude you need to try this you need to try this and it's funny i met kevin uh i think it was 2020 when the world was shut down me and kevin uh, he was actually an ASW fan and was a big fan of our single malt and a big fan of Duality specifically, which is a uh, malted whiskey product that we have. But he uh, was also a huge bourbon fan. So he reached out about wanting to write a review on one of our products. So we started chatting. And then when the world was kind of like starting to open up again, me and him started hanging out and drinking whiskey. But it was still like kind of like you weren't doing group things. You weren't doing it so me and him were just hanging out one-on-one -on -one and he was bringing all these bottles of bourbon for me to taste and i was like wow okay i get it now like i was tasting cheap bourbon which is why i didn't think i liked bourbon or didn't think i liked american whiskey like i knew i liked american whiskey from asw but then i liked scotch and stuff because i was tasting nice scotches i think that almost anything when you're tasting cheap stuff versus like nicer things right you start to appreciate uh, things differently. So tasting those cheap whiskeys versus tasting the really nice versions of them. That was how I was like, okay, I get it. Bourbon can be good, which is a weird thing to say, especially on this, like hearing that come out of my mouth. Oh, bourbon can be good. Cause now I've had so many amazing bourbons. And honestly, I prefer bourbon as a category and American whiskey as a category to you, uh, European whiskey, but I have to give like some credit European whiskey, scotch specifically. That was my intro then later start getting into American whiskeys. And then the third person was Justin, obviously, Justin Manglitz, who's the master distiller here at ASW. He's been making whiskey for 25 years. He does a kick-ass job at everything he does. Um, super excellent, uh, super on point, an amazing palate. 
uh, also my best friend. I owe so much to him. Like everything that he's taught me, he has given to me as a gift. Uh, it wasn't because he had to teach me. He didn't have to teach me nothing. So everything that I've learned about whiskey ma making comes from Justin. Um, so he has crafted and helped me uh, understand whiskey tasting. And we have our own preferences. He likes different things than what I like, but I owe a lot to him. So those were the three main people that I really give credit to as far as whiskey tasting goes, uh, my palate goes. So to answer your question, finally, the three bottles that I will take, uh, yeah. I, I think bottle number one is going to be Ardbeg Ugadel, which is when it comes to a smoky scotch, that is my favorite. It is rich, bacony. It's not overly phenolic. Like it doesn't have that, uh, the phenols aggressive. It doesn't have the uh, off putting like band aid flavors that a lot of people don't like in Lafroy or some of the other Islas. Uh, I think Ardbag Ugadel would be my scotch that I would take. As far as bourbon, I think I would take an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Mm. I've always mm. been a big fan of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of, you know, people are weird about them losing the age, not losing the age statement, but changing the age statement away from it being 12 years, you know, like they had their, uh, you know, their dip below at 11 and then they went up to 13 and now they're down to 10 and people are like, oh, dude, these are getting young. But honestly, even then, like 10 years, it's an amazing kick ass yeah. bourbon. I mean, it's just suit like here's the thing. I would almost say that it might even be my daily drinker, which is also another weird thing to say because it isn't super readily available. It's readily available enough to where I think yeah. you you could have that as your daily drinker. But also, I think that's just a bourbon that I feel good taking that with me. I don't want to take a yeah. uh, you know a bourbon with me that's just like one that I like occasionally because there's some that are like amazing bourbons I've tasted. I'm like this is amazing, but. I think Elijah Craig Barrel Proof would honestly be uh, the other whiskey that I'd take with me. Yep. And then I have to take some coffee with me. Uh, okay. if, if, okay. it, if it's not if it's not whiskey, uh, yep. if, if I'm only taking three drinks with me, scotch, yep. bourbon, and coffee, um, I'm not going to take another whiskey. I mean, I'm assuming there's water there because you need water. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll assume there's water. Now, let me ask you this. So in addition to that, what what ASW are you taking with you? Yeah, so if I can take any ASW, I mean, I think our soloist bourbon is phenomenal. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, it's a four grain pot distilled bourbon aged uh, really five to six years now. It used to be four to five years. Now it's five to six years. And man, it is really good. A lot of it is double barreled. It's rich. It's chocolatey. It's like really thick. Um, I don't know if this is leaking, but I think you guys may have picked one. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if we're talking about that yet. We, we we did. We did. Yeah, we're okay, good. Cool, cool, cool. We can talk about that. All right, cool, cool, cool. But yeah, I mean, that is that is an amazing uh, bourbon. When I first tasted that, I was like super surprised that bourbon could taste like that. Um, you know, I was like, this is really different. But it's also, it has those big bourbon flavors. It has that oak. It has that body. It has that sweetness. Like it has everything you want in, in a bourbon, but then it has like this little bit of extra thing going on that's not in all that you wouldn't really necessarily find in the column distilled bourbon. And that's mostly because of the way that we distill and the flavors that we're getting and the, the way the oils are carrying over. Because when we're talking about a column distilled bourbon versus a pot distilled bourbon, a column distilled bourbon, you're losing a lot of what that grain has to offer and a lot of what that spirit has to offer through the column distillation where the pot distillation, you're getting all these extra oils, you're getting all these extra flavors, you're getting all this extra thickness just from the spirit itself. So then uh, you're not counting on the bourbon to be flavored completely by the barrel. You're counting on a lot of the flavor coming from the spirit and from the, the grain mash that was before the spirit um, to get a lot of those flavors, not just the barrel, which to be fair, like uh, yes, mash bill makes a big difference. Yeah. I'm not saying that Kentucky bourbon mash bill doesn't matter. It does matter. It makes a big difference. But whenever you're, but the distillation makes a big difference too. And whenever you're using a column still, you're counting on a barrel to make up about 70 to 80% of that flavor. Whereas when you're using a pot uh, to distill your spirit, you're really only counting on that barrel to make up like 60 to 70% of that flavor because you're getting a lot of flavor 
from the grain itself mm-hmm. in that point and from the spirit itself, which sounds like a bad thing because you think, oh, spirity whiskey is not good. No, this is it's balanced with oak. You're going to have that uh, transformation from the spirity flavors, the flavors that people associate with spirit, but you're getting uh, also developed mature flavors from yeah. the grain mash itself carrying over through the distillation, yeah. which that, is really that, that's, that's, that's interesting. And I, I think even when we were there, um, to me, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it really seemed like you had a, a really strong, I don't want to say either preference or love for that pot still kind of distillation versus maybe just the, the column still. Can you talk a little bit about kind of what, what it is you, you prefer with one versus the other a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So we do actually have a, a hybrid column at our battery location that we use for um, mostly for vodka and gin. Um, so it's like I've, I've seen column stills. I've worked on it a little bit with Jerry. Like I, I know how they function. I know that how they work. But what we use to make our whiskey is a double pot uh, distillation system. So there's no column hybrid. It's just traditional pure pot stills. And I think a lot of it has to do with this is what I learned on. This is what I learned to to distill on. Like, And Justin himself has uh, brought so much love uh, into my heart for that style of whiskey making. Like he has taught me why this uh, system is, as he would say, superior, um, why it works well and why they use it the way that they do in Scotland. Because when you're talking about Scotch and Irish whiskey, uh, I mean, most of those spirits are going into used barrels. So if if you uh, are talking about used barrels, you're not talking about a lot of flavor coming from the barrel. You're talking about a lot of the flavor come from coming from the spirit, um, which is what happens with a lot of European whiskey because they are used casks. You're getting a lot of spirit flavor um, mm-hmm. carrying over now. In the United States, we use brand new charred oak for most all of our whiskeys. Not all of our whiskeys, but most all of our whiskeys are going into brand new charred oak barrels. So we're getting, a, we don't need as much flavor from the spirit. So we can use this efficient system of column distillation. But when you are able to combine the, the benefits of what you get with a pot still, which is thick, flavorful spirit with the benefits of a brand new charred oak barrel, which is uh like thick sweet uh filtration goodness into Mm. your whiskey then you're going to be getting a lot of benefits we're talking our whiskeys are most of our whiskeys are four to six years old that are coming out right now and Mm. they are just as thick i'm not just like talking out my ass like they are just as thick as some 12 year old bourbons like we get that and it's not because of the way that we're maturing necessarily it's because of the spirit that we're putting in the barrel the barrel uh is going to add that thickness and add those extra oils but it's already an oily thick spirit going into the barrel so we have a really big just a bold flavored uh whiskey you're getting all types of like flavors when it goes into that barrel. When it comes out of that barrel, it's even thicker and more flavorful. Um, so you don't really need that extra time in the oak necessarily. It doesn't hurt. It's not bad for the whiskey, but we have really thick, uh, fully mature spirit. Is I think the best term I can use is saying that our whiskey is fully matured at five to six years old. You see some people that are producing whiskey that's five to six years old. And you immediately write it off because you're like, oh, that's not going to be fully matured. It's wow. it's five to six years old. It can't taste fully matured. And when you taste it, if it's column distilled, mm-hmm. it probably won't be fully matured because it's not going to have that thickness. It's not going to have those oils. It's not going to have those flavors that you need from the extra time in the barrel. But yeah. because of the pot distillation, you're able to get that, those flavors into the whiskey uh, m- at a much earlier time in the maturation process. Yeah. It's, it's interesting when you talk about age, because I think, I think what you just kind of hit on is a, is a great point is because I think far too often people get locked into, you know, older is better, right? Like everyone always think, you know, you'd go and do all these barrel picks and everybody would want the, the oldest and highest proof, you know? So eventually once you do that and you're part of that and you taste other things, 
you realize very quickly that that doesn't always translate to the best. And, and it was very interesting, even when we were at ASW with you and tasting through things, again, we're not dealing, we weren't tasting through whiskeys that have these ultra ages. But when you were talking about the viscosity, the thickness, the richness, the complexity, and, and that's what I've got right here. This was the Georgia Hartwood pick that we did. And, and, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that was maybe in the six ish year range, something along those lines, I believe. Yeah. And, and again, you, you would mention that to a lot of people today and they may have a tendency to say, Oh, that's young and, and just skip it. Or because it comes from ASW, how good can it be? Sure. This was exactly the reason why I wanted you to be on here was that you could convey better than I can how good a whiskey you can have coming off of, you know, from, you know, pot still distillation being in that four to six year range and having just all of that, that full bodied that people think they want always from like an Elijah Craig barrel proof or something. Well, in this, you are getting exactly what you just described in this six year that people want in that 12 year bourbon from, you know, other, other distilleries. And, and, and that's the best part. Cause when you taste through this and this was the sample of that we did um, a month or so ago, and, and that thing is, is so rich and decadent. It, it It's one that you can really spend a lot of time with just letting it kind of evolve in the glass. So I'm glad that you kind of touched a little bit on just the, the age and it doesn't always have to be, you know, <laughs> super old or even honestly it doesn't have to be super high proof either i think i think people get a lot of that kind of you know all messed up is that they feel that the higher proof and the higher ages equal you know great whiskey and and oftentimes that's just not the not the case yeah well let me go ahead and say this real quick uh because you were mentioning georgia hartwood so yeah. georgia hartwood's going to be uh the reason why that's so thick isn't necessarily the pot distillation because that is actually a sourced whiskey from mgp however we do what we call like a manipulation to the maturation where we add that georgia oak and we put it in a barrel for the second time so that is you're right it's a six-year-old whiskey and it has that thickness but what we wanted to do is we we like to be known for our thick flavorful oaky spirits mm -hmm. in general or just uh thick flavorful spirits not necessarily oaky so the way that we got our georgia heartwood so thick flavorful and oaky is just by manipulation and the maturation and it's in the name georgia heartwood so mm -hmm. adding that georgia oak gives it those extra uh just oils through the oak that extra thickness that extra flavor um so that one is a source column still but we do have a very thick uh, spirit in this one too, just because we use the manipulated maturation where we're able to just pull more flavors, more oils, more big like stuff out of a column distilled spirit. So that's, I mean, that's another thing that we like to do, like with, as far as like sourcing whiskey, uh, we're yet to source a whiskey that we source and just put into a bottle. We're yet yeah. to do that. And I say yet, because I think that uh, the rate we're growing, eventually we're going to have some products that may be like that. But as of now, every single thing that we have put into a bottle, we have fiddled with in some way or another, which is a lot of the name, the fiddler, uh, fiddle, uh, fiddler bourbon comes from us fiddling with the spirit. Um, but also our master distiller, Justin is an amazing fiddler. Like he can play the fiddle. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Like probably just as good as he makes whiskey. Like he is a fantastic fiddler. I wish there was more content of him playing the fiddle on the internet. And if there's, I, I will try to get more of that soon because it's, it's an amazing, an amazing thing when he plays the fiddle. But uh, so we fiddle with some MGP for that Georgia Hartwood. Uh, we age on Georgia Oak. It's the first whiskey ever legally aged on Georgia Oak. Um, so get or legally finished, sorry, excuse me, finished yeah. on Georgia Oak. Um, but we're getting a lot of interesting and unique flavors from that, Georgia oak finish and a lot of that body and thickness and it is a six-year-old it's five to six years old and it is super thick because of that but uh also just like spirits like our resurgence this is a rye uh a rye whiskey this is four years old um I mean you can see the colors nice and dark for four years old but also like it's super thick gonna have tons of flavors uh just from the way that we distill this so the resurgence is one of those that is a pot distilled uh 
single malt rye whiskey that we fully uh, distill here in house and mature uh, on new oak. And it has that thickness of a much older whiskey at four years old. Yeah, so. I was going to get to, I'm glad you kind of started to bring some of that stuff up because I wanted to hit on some of the things that you guys are are 100% producing there. So so besides uh, what you just showed, what um, can we talk a little bit about the other uh, the other whiskeys that you're you're producing there and kind of some of the the nuances with with some of them? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I think I'm trying to think how many different mash bills we have. Uh, well over a dozen at this point. Uh, we've made well over a dozen different whiskeys. Uh, we have various uh, styles of whiskey. So uh, Justin is a real big fan of single malt in general, which as am I, uh, having scotch be my intro into whiskey, I'm a big single malt fan. So we do make a lot of single malt. Uh, we've probably made, I want to say eight, but maybe that maybe even more than eight different single malts. Um, so all using not- different barley malts or different styles of uh, malt. So it's, it's funny too, because whenever you go and taste different scotches, um, from distilleries, usually it's all the same as far as recipes and mash bill goes. They may peat it differently. They may finish it in a different barrel. But like most things at Lafroig are all the same distillate and the same recipe. We mm-hmm. have eight at least. I'm, I'm trying to think. If I could rattle them all off in my head, I should have wrote them all down. Eight at least different single malts that are all different recipes. They're all different mash bills. They're all different styles of barley. Like they're all super unique and different. So because we're able to do that, like we get a wide variety of different single malts. I mean, if you go into a craft brewery, you'll get to see all these different beers that are different styles of beers. We do that with whiskey. And I'm just talking about single malt specifically. So I'm talking about a subdivision of single malt where we're talking about varietals of single malt and styles of single malt. and that's just recipes. That's not even talking about finishes. We have some single malts that we've done various finishes on. Um, so, I mean, we have a bunch of those whiskeys. Uh, we have several different rye whiskeys. Resurgence is our main. That is the rye whiskey that we make, and it's 100% malted rye. Um, it's something. It was the first thing ever distilled here in house on our stills. Uh, we still actually have the first barrel of Resurgence rye that we've ever made. So we'll probably release that. I don't want to say for sure that's going to be a 10 year release. Yeah. Could be later, but we still have our first barrel here, uh, which is awesome that we still have that. But that was the first thing ever made on the stills. Um, and then we have some other source rye whiskeys uh, that are under the Fiddler line. But you can assume that if it's coming from us and it doesn't say Fiddler on the label, then we have made it. We do, however, it gets a little confusing because we do, however, have some uh, Fiddler label whiskeys that we distill in house just because it's a very strong bourbon brand in general so the bourbons that we make are still under fiddler as a label when they're made in house they're still under fiddler uh we just have different styles of it but if it's coming from us and it doesn't say fiddler you can safely assume that we made it in house uh we have also styles of whiskey like an irish style whiskey yeah Um, which was fantastic i absolutely love that absolutely loved it yeah so irish style whiskey Uh, We have various malt whiskeys, like we have a malt whiskey that is uh, double malt whiskey, which is just a kind of a style that Justin created. So it was kind of like a stick it to the TTB moment because uh, (laughs) most whiskeys are like, oh, it has to be 51% this, 51% this, or 51% this to determine what the category is. And Justin's like, what if I do 50-50? What is it then? Uh, (laughs) And it's just whiskey. It's just whiskey. Um, But... We call it a double malt whiskey. It's 50% malted rye, 50% malted barley. So because we have that, it's like getting to do uh, something a little bit different. And people were like, is it a rye? Is it a malt? I don't know. And we're like, it's both. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, we have a lot of different whiskeys. It's a lot of fun. We, we have a lot of fun here, honestly, just getting to be crafty and getting to make different things and taste different things. is really cool. Yeah. So let, let's, I guess, let's kind of talk a little bit about, um, you know, ASW as a whole, kind of, um, you know, your role there, obviously, as and and correct me if I'm wrong, assistant head distiller at ASW. Is that my so, close? Uh, my- so, <laughs> so it's actually between assistant and between head, just distiller. That's what that's what they call me. <laughs> I'm just a distiller. But but here's here's the thing. So I mean, I've I've been uh, to be a head distiller is to basically be carrying. 
uh, most of the workload to be making most of the whiskey. At this point, I am making most of the whiskey. Justin would acknowledge that. Justin has even said that I work the job of a head distiller. Uh, I may not necessarily have the title and the pay of a head distiller yet, but I have the job of the head have, head distiller where I'm making a majority of the whiskey, doing a majority of the uh, production workload as far as what whiskey making requires. Uh, Justin's there uh, making a lot of whiskey most of the time, but he's kind of behind the scenes doing a lot of, uh, he loves riding, the, honestly, he calls the forklift his trusty steed. So he, he usually is riding around the warehouse on the forklift and leaving the whiskey making up to me, which is an honor um, because he has taught me everything I know and he's, he's an amazing whiskey maker. So for him to trust me with his babies like he does is, I mean, it, it means a lot to me. And I don't take it lightly. I really appreciate it. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of do the job of a head distiller, but my title for now is just a stiller. Um, I had actually a lot of people texting me. They're like, yo, congrats, you're head distiller now? You're head distiller now? I was like, I like not exactly. We, like, we, 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 we talked a little bit about it, and I put that on there. And I was probably getting ahead of myself because I, I knew I'm like – you you will be at some point. I, I am just kind of my, I'm pre qualifying all of that. Yeah, I, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> but it was. I mean, I I love I love the passion, the knowledge, all of that. I mean, I think from uh, you know kind of a, the whiskey nerdy side of things, you always appreciate that when you can you can sense and feel the passion, and then get to taste you know that how it's translated into the into the whiskey, and um and that was kind of really what what kind of continue to to draw me towards what it is that that you're that you're doing but um let me i guess let me ask you this i guess um asw as a as a whole um in terms of you know production and and just everything going on uh, going on at the distillery what what does that look like in terms of volume so people have an idea of, of what it is that you're producing and and roughly you know kind of some some volume of of whiskey yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So really our system and our distillery, when we are uh, maxed out making as much whiskey that we can make on our current system, we only produce 500 barrels of whiskey a year, which to some may sound like a lot and to most of you may sound like a little. It is a little in the grand scheme of whiskey distilleries. We do not make as much whiskey as we would like to be making. Uh, which means the stuff that we distill is very limited. The stuff that we create, that we produce is very limited. Uh, right now we're sourcing, I think, seven to 800 to 900 barrels. Uh, like, a, a, essentially, we have, let me say this, we have our stockpile of MGP, and we sell um, much, much more than 500 bar barrels a year. So most of the whiskey that we are putting out is going to be sourced whiskey right now just because that's what we have a majority of and that's what we're doing a lot of but ideally you know we would love to be in a place where we're producing bigger volumes upgrading our system doing more than we're currently doing but right now where we are um, with our current system 500 barrels a year is what we can distill and produce in-house uh, and we have a nice stockpile of MGP, so we we can play with source whiskey. We can have fun with source whiskey. We can do cool products like this uh, this toasted fiddler, yeah, which I'm really stoked on. Just came out. It should be available most places. Um, but yeah, you know, we're able to have some fun with the MGP and do some fun finishes and stuff like that. And we have some more cool stuff uh, coming out in the future with like uh, some different MGP products, which I'm super excited about. But as far as like what we are producing, 500 barrels a year is what we make, what Justin and I produce. It's, it's interesting, you know, because when you start to kind of talk about volume, you know, and you, you hear what the big boys do versus, you know, what you do. And I mean, 500 barrels, like some of these, these big places will do that. I don't know in terms of the, the context of how many barrels some of these guys will produce, but they could probably do 500 barrels probably in a couple of days, depending on, oh. you know, who, who you are. And it just gives you that, that idea of like the volume. And then this is, this, this will kind of tie into that is where we get it a lot. And I'm sure you do too, is, you know, at times why people get a little bit excited over the cost of things. Well, when you're dealing with lower volume versus extremely high volume stuff, there, there's a difference there, you know? So you're, I think not only, you know, partially paying for, for both of those kind of, um, 
you know, processes, but for what you guys do, you know, for me anyway, you know, my passion would be to support a, a brand like yours because you know, the people behind it, you know, the, the, the quality, the, the craftsmanship, all of that, that it really truly is uh, a craft that, that you have learned and that you're now being able to share with, with all of us. So, um, yeah. I, I can't say thank you enough because when we were there and just listening to you, I mean, I could have listened to you talk about that stuff, you know, all, all day long. So, um, awesome. that, that, that for me was, and again, I, I think part of it, even when we were there doing the, uh, the barrel selections, I started to find myself like maybe wanting to get even outside of the box that I normally get in because as we were kind of wrapping things up, we were starting to taste through some single malts and, and, and normally my go-to would always be bourbon, you know, like that's just how, my comfort zone. Well, I was having to fight off the other guys who wanted the bourbon and I was trying to fight off the one that there was a single malt that was so strawberry cream forward that it was okay. A beautiful, beautiful whiskey. And that was where I got to thinking like, my God, we've got like a role reversal with a lot of everybody who was was there. But it just made me uh, appreciate even more, you know, what it was that that you do there and the whiskeys that you're making there that I wanted more people to have an opportunity to know more about that and have a, an opportunity to to try those things. So I know, I know you've got band practice tonight. We're getting close to 45 minutes or so, but um, as far as like where people can find some of your whiskeys, where things are distributed, can you kind of share a little bit of, of that with everyone so that if they do um, want to find something from ASW where they can go? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, right now we are nationwide, uh, through Total Wine, we have most of our uh, just like simple core products through Total Wine, but we are also uh, finally kind of getting into those more craft liquor stores and those uh, just like mom and pop stores around the nation. So most places um, these days may carry our whiskey. And if they don't, honestly, it helps us a ton if you go in and ask for it because there may be, uh, you know, once they start asking for the distributors, their distributors reach out to us and then we're able to provide that service. So we, a lot of times we're able to get into these stores and get into these states more often just through distributors uh, reaching out to us. Also, uh, you can always reach out to me, uh, reach out to me on Instagram, uh, just reach out to me. If you really want our whiskey, like I will find a way to get in touch with the distributor in your state and I would love to do anything I can to help us get out into your state, especially if you have a community bourbon group, anyone that wants to taste our stuff, hell, I'll send you a bottle. If you have a group big enough or whatever, just hit me up. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. I'd love for you to taste our whiskey. Uh, second, I do believe that we are on both seal box and shared core. So you can buy it online. It's super simple. Just get on there, buy a bottle. It ships to most States these days. I think most laws and everything, makes it where you can buy whiskey online pretty easily now. So shared pour, seal box, uh, most stores, talk to your stores, talk to the liquor store owners, tell them that you want some, and we'll see if we can figure it out. Talk yeah. to me. I'm, I'm a down to earth guy. Reach out to me. We'll yeah. talk. We'll get some whiskey yeah. out to you. That was, that was the, that was the cool thing. It was that I think a lot of times, you know, people get into this, that perception of everybody that does what you do, you know, that there's, you know, that, that they're untouchable. You can't reach them. You can't do all these things, but like, that's refreshing about, you know, guys like you, you can, you can reach out, you'll talk, I mean, you can bullshit with them, whatever it may be, but that's the, that's really the fun side of, of, you know, this industry is that there's a lot more people that are, are like you and, and a lot of us that are, that are watching tonight where people simply want to enjoy good whiskey with good people. And it's, it's really that, that simple. So um, all right. So we're close to 45 minutes. Let's do this before you, um, head off to, to band practice, let's run a randomizer. I'll give you guys a, one more minute to, uh, to drop your, uh, your name in there for the, uh, for tonight's giveaway. We'll find the, uh, the winner for tonight and you're not going to know, I'm not going to tell you what it is and I don't think Wit's going to. So the idea tonight was to have Wit pick a bottle that of his choice 
send it out to you for you to enjoy with your your friends, family, whatever it may be. That's the idea is to get as much good whiskey into the hands of you guys that maybe haven't maybe haven't had a, a chance to try. So um, if anybody wants, I'll give you another uh, forty seconds, and then we'll uh, we'll let Wit uh, we'll let Wit go and uh, warm up his vocal cords a little bit more. So um, all right, let me get this ready, and we'll uh, we'll get this one going here. Thanks again for joining tonight. Greatly, uh, greatly appreciate it. Yeah, shout out to all my friends. I, I wish I could see who I was watching, um, but I think my mom's watching. Hey, mom. Uh, <laughs> I think most of my homies are watching. What's up, homies? Uh, yeah, big shout out to to all my friends and family and everyone that's watching. Uh, yeah, I love all you guys. You guys are great. Kevin, you're probably watching. If you're not, maybe you're doing uh, church stuff. But, dude, Kevin, love you, dude. Thanks for helping me get into whiskey. Uh, Lauren, thanks for watching. Hillary, thanks for watching. Uh, David, all the dudes over at band practice. Dylan, you guys are probably already jamming, but thanks for watching. Yeah, I don't know. Just That's how it goes. Man, everyone, everyone who supported you and got you, uh, you know, Hung with you until you were, you know, to where you are now. And uh, that's great. That's, that's amazing. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta have good friends and family behind you. That's for sure. So, all right, we're going to lock it down. I got all the names. Let me, uh, let me throw the uh, randomizer up here real quick and we'll get, uh, let's see, share screen. Um, all right, let's go. All right. So hopefully let me, uh, let me shuffle this thing up a little bit. Give it a, Five shuffles, and we'll uh, we'll give it a spin, and we'll see what uh, who tonight's winner is. And you won't know what you're getting until uh, it's delivered to your door. So that's actually Mr. Jarrett talking. So Jihawk, congrats, buddy! Congrats on that. I'll uh, I know uh, I know Derek. I'll get in I'll get in touch with him, and we can uh, we can um, let me stop sharing. I'll uh I'll get with him. So D Hawk, congrats, buddy. Um, yeah, Jason was in here. He just he says Wits the man. Yes, he is. So I'll uh, hey I'll uh, I'll let you go. I know you got you, uh, you got other things to do, but I want to say thank you for joining tonight, and and more importantly, thanks for your your passion, all of that for what you're doing. Um, we're we're really looking forward to bringing the whiskeys to to our group, and I think everybody who has an opportunity to try something from ASW, you guys need to go and, uh, and get your, your hands on that. So, but uh, thanks again for joining tonight. I, uh, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Love it. Love uh, big support to just all my friends and like everyone, Jim, Kelly, Justin, uh, man, I really appreciate everyone so much, Scott. I appreciate you bringing me on. I appreciate being here and getting to just, talk about whiskey a little bit it's uh it's fun like you said uh you could listen to me talk for hours and believe me i could talk for hours but i probably shouldn't because it would get boring <laughs> after a while <laughs> no it, it doesn't thanks again hey man i i appreciate it go uh go get those uh vocal cords loosened up and we will uh we'll chat later i'll reach out to you afterwards sounds good scott talk sounds good to see you brother man. thanks All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, uh, I'll stay on here for a few more minutes. So as you guys could see, um, you know, what it is that that WIT is doing at ASW and, and a lot of us got an opportunity to really see and and be a part of that. And, and that was the awesome part of of that experience was was to be able to have, again, that opportunity to try a lot of different things, because what it is that that they are that they are doing um it is it's it's just one of those those things where there's so many different variations of of whiskeys again he had talked a little bit about some of the um uh some of the single ball some of the even some of the sourcing everything the georgia heartwood and all of that but again it, it did matter they they put their spin on a lot of a lot of things and you know, you got a little taste, I think, of the the passion uh, behind what it is that he's doing, and really, honestly, all of them. When you're there and you get a chance to see 
you know, the people that work for and, and, and with wit, you can just sense all of, all of that. So, um, I, I appreciate everybody, you know, joining, joining tonight. Uh, D uh, congrats on winning that. I know wit will probably send you something that's, that's awesome. And, uh, you'll, you'll enjoy no matter what it is. I think it's going to be definitely something different. And I'll say this about their whiskey in particular is as, as different as it is, it's as enjoyable. And I say that from my experience because, you know, up until probably a couple of years ago, I didn't want anything except bourbon and to, to kind of dip your toes in a lot of these different kind of categories of whiskey, I think allowed me to be a little bit more open to being at a place like ASW and trying a lot of those really incredible whiskeys. Like I would have said before, nah, I just don't want to try. It wasn't really my thing, but that, that kind of being open to that allowed me to, uh, to really, I guess I'll say expand my horizons or whatever you want to call it, but it was, it was absolutely uh, fantastic. So, all right. Anybody else got any, uh, any questions? Oh yeah. I'll drop the, uh, thanks. There you go. Gee, must the, uh, the ADD must've been kicking in watching that thing just continue to go while I, while I rambled on. So I took care of that for you, my man. Um, so let's see what else is going on. So uh, I know we had talked a little bit about, so for anybody part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, uh, one of the Georgia, Georgia Heartwoods uh, that we did, which is specifically this one that I'm sipping on now, absolutely fantastic. And and it was just going through that process. We probably tasted through, I think maybe five different barrels of just that. And then this is where we got to kind of move on to some of the different, much more unique things. Uh, William Wiley was with us, obviously Jason. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Don was with us. <clears throat> Will Henderson was with us. I said, William Wiley. I think that was it for the ASW pick, but absolutely fantastic day. We were there hours. We were at prior to that. We were over at the, I think it was maybe called Stillwater. I believe was the brewery. Fantastic beer, great food right next door. So if you're, if you ever visit ASW and I would highly recommend you go. And if you see Wit there, chat him up. I mean, he'll, he'll probably show you around and God only knows what he'll let you, let you taste as well. But if you, if you want to have some food and maybe beer before there's a place called the uh, Sweetwater, sorry, William uh, corrected me. So yeah, Sweetwater, fantastic uh, food, fantastic beer. We had a good, uh, good day uh, over there. And, um, that yeah, we went back to the, the distillery, drank a bunch of whiskey, sat around the room that wit was in. Uh, we kind of sat around that for maybe a, a hour or so, uh, before we kind of had to head out of Atlanta, but absolutely, absolutely, um, fantastic. So, uh, let's see, um, uh, what do we got here? Scotty is the virtual still a go with wit. Uh, Yes. So for anybody, um, again, it's basically sold out for the most part, but oftentimes through Patreon, I will do these tastings with a lot of different distilleries and three of the bottles you see here, two that are down here, uh, will be part of the tasting. So you guys will get this go around, uh, five samples of, of whiskey. So we limit it to, to about 20 and we're, we're already there. So what you're going to be able to taste through will be, phenomenal and for the for the most part my guess would be outside of anybody who is like local ish like william most of you guys will probably never have tasted at least all five of them at one time so i think doing some tastings and wit will be part of it in in march right now it's looking like probably possibly that second thursday in march i'm just trying to uh kind of uh, cross some T's, dot some I's with wit to make sure we're we're good there. But looking forward to that. That will be where we kind of taste through uh, five different samples of what it is they're doing. So, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that was that was a heck of a heck of a day. So any uh, any questions? Anything? Anybody got anything else? We'll kind of wrap it up here in about five minutes. What else you guys got? Anything for anything for me? Yeah. So gee, I think you'll be, this is again, is, is if you're, if you're in a category of, I think having a real, like much more open mind about different whiskeys and profiles, 
you're you're going to get that with ASW. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to kind of describe the the profiles because there's so many different kind and they vary vastly. So that is where getting an opportunity to to try some of this stuff, man, I would I would highly encourage you guys to find. What I would say is maybe it's not a great representation, I think, of of what ASW does. But if you're starting somewhere, I maybe even and and William, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But as far as a general generality, um, I would maybe start with the Georgia Heartwood. Um, they do have the cast strength one, which I believe is this right here, the Fiddler. Um, that right there is an absolute. I know that white is not going to show up very well, but. Um, that bottle right there is an absolutely fantastic bottle. Uh, like you said, they're just releasing, uh, their fiddler. Uh, this is their toasted rye. Uh, what is, other one do they have here? This is their toasted, uh, straight bourbon. So we've got a few things we can, we can taste there, but you can see, I mean, these are all things that they are doing that are, are absolutely fantastic different. I think I'm going to hide these other two because, Let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, that's another fantastic one right there. But um, I don't want to give away the other. I don't want to give away the other. The other two. But then the guys through the the tasting will know what everything is, and I like for people to not not know what it is. But again, like he had mentioned, you can find stuff on Sealbox, Sharepour, all of those places. They're starting to distribute to a lot of a lot of other places. So, um, so let's see here. We got. So I've heard him right. Filler might be MGP or might be. So yeah, it, it is it is MGP that they then tweak with that Georgia Heartwood. So it gives them that that slightly different kind of profile, and it adds up really adds some some awesome like richness and and sweetness to it to allow um, some of that Georgia like influence to be to be on things. Um, I think it just gives. Uh, and again, the Georgia hardwood, like the little staves, I mean, they couldn't have been, but maybe 12 or 16 inches, an inch in diameter, roughly. And then they, they kind of char those to however they want and drop those, you know, into the barrel and then let those kind of interact with the, with the whiskey. So, all right, let's see, let's get my correction here. So personally, I would say get a solstice, sol I'm solstice, uh, soloist, uh, Georgia hardwood, resurgent track. <laughs> So William's suggestion is basically buy everything, buy, <laughs> buy it all. So can't go wrong with all of it. You're going to hit on something, everything with filler, with the exception of the soloist and whatever that is, whatever syncopation, syncopation is MG. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So I thought, I thought a lot of that was, was there, but again, this will give you at least a little idea of, of just some of what they're, they're kind of doing. You can start there work your way up, you know, like William said, you know, start all those, you know, these different, these different areas because let's see, I think that's what this one actually was. Yeah. So the soloist is, is there, is their bourbon. And that was absolutely, absolutely fantastic, fantastic. And William, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the last barrel, that second one that we were really fighting hard for that we ended up getting for the, for the group. Correct. I think that's I think that's what we we ended up with. Um, at that point, we had all drank quite a quite a bit of whiskey, but it was man, oh man, that was they were some absolutely absolutely fantastic fantastic whiskeys. So, um, what else we got here? Um, <laughs> what a siege. McDonald's top dog coming out with a Cedars happy meal, I think. Oh boy. Uh yeah, so we got a cast strength uh soloist and not the red X. Yeah, the red X was the one I was fighting for, and I think that was a hundred percent um malted barley, like something was different. I think it was like red red X, yeah, yeah the red X. Um and man, it was just that was crazy. It was the it was the most strawberry, most creamy strawberry forward i think single malt that i have have ever had it was absolutely fantastic and i would 
I, I think they're only going to release it there um, uh, for from what they were kind of talking about. But I think uh, I think William Wiley's going to end up being the uh, the runner for for quite a quite a few people. But absolutely fantastic whiskey. Uh, what do we got here? Hawk, Hawk asked a question to you. Hawk, I asked a question to you up in the chat for a friend. All right. I must have, I must have missed whatever the question was. So anyway, all right, guys, I think that was, I think that was it. So, uh, next week I'm going to have, uh, Tim Young. So there's the, the brand Hooten Young and, and they've obviously partnered up big, big military, uh, background. They have both whiskeys and cigars that they do. So I'm going to have, um, Tim Young on on the channel next Tuesday, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, his background, the introduction to the world of whiskey, cigars, all of these things. So it's going to be kind of another fun stream, maybe get more exposure to a brand that maybe some other people are, are unfamiliar with. I know they're doing cast strength bourbons, some rye. Uh, they have just a standard uh, 93 proof rye, which is one that, that I actually have uh, some cigars. I've got a couple uh, cigars from, from them. But, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of sitting down and, and talking with, um, with Tim next week and just kind of, uh, exploring a little bit more about, uh, that, that brand as a whole. But, uh, and then the following week I'll be gone, uh, all the, the entire week. So I won't, I won't be around at all, but next week we'll have, uh, we'll have Tim, uh, Tim Young from Hoot and Young on, um, on the show. So Guys, as always, thank you. Appreciate all the support. Thanks for dropping in tonight and um, and just kind of, you know, spending an hour listening to to what Wit kind of had to talk about his background, what he does at the distillery, the passion for the brand and his whiskeys, all of all of that. So, with that, I again appreciate all of your support. Appreciate you guys being here uh, every Tuesday. And I can't say thank you enough. And uh, remember. It's about the journey, not the destination. We will see you guys uh, next Tuesday. And um, appreciate you guys. Have a good one. See ya.